woke everybody up. I was just like, hey, who's still in business? What they're doing? I went to Facebook. I went to LinkedIn. And I want you, you can see this, right? With my ashy hands. Okay. Imagine a stack of business cards 10 times this. That's how many business cards I have. 10 times. These are the people who are still in business or I can find. You know, they may not necessarily be in the same field, but these were the people that I could find. The rest were gone. And I really started, you know, to go back and I was like, okay, now that we have the benefit of time, you had the benefit because, you know, when I met a lot of these people, I didn't have my own business. I was an account executive or outside salesperson. And I started to really quantify why did some people, very a few, just a few, there was one person. <laughs> telling you today was a very interesting day i was messing around hold on get rid of that sound okay it's messing around and i found a day timer and if you don't know what a day timer is this was back in the day when you used to have these folders and calendars and stuff it was nothing like it is today you don't even need those things well maybe you do i don't know i haven't really checked with day timer but I had these plastic inserts that were full of business cards. Some of them, five business cards uh, crammed in there. Because this day timer is 20 freaking years old. It's 20 years old. So, as an experiment, I decided to look everybody up. I was just like, hey, who's still in business? What they're doing? I went to Facebook. I went to LinkedIn. And I want you, you can see this, right? With my ashy hands. Okay. Imagine a stack of business cards 10 times this. That's how many business cards I have, 10 times. These are the people who are still in business or I can find. You know, they may not necessarily be in the same field, but these were the people that I could find. The rest were gone. And I really started, you know, to go back and I was like, okay, now that we have the benefit of time, you had the benefit because, you know, when I met a lot of these people, I didn't have my own business. I was an account executive or outside salesperson. And I started to really quantify why did some people, very a few, just a few, there was one person that I they used to intimidate me. And actually, the first thing that came up on her was a foreclosure last month on a house she has. Her name, her name is very, very, very distinctive. It was her. There was no, no, the name is just too distinctive. And I actually did a Google search and she's the only person with that name. And her and her husband. And I was just like, wow. So I started to think then. I noticed a trend. And this is why history is so wonderful. All of the financial guys. <laughs> this one guy. He actually is not that far from where I'm at. Where I'm at now. I'm not going to put his name out there. But I met him and talked. He. When I first met him. Um, hustler. Was the thing that came to mind. And I researched him. He still has his same business. He works out of his house. Uh, move, and he's still doing his thing. And then the other people I looked up. One that is still doing it. Or doing something that is greater. Is at the same level or greater than what they were doing. Had a high hustle factor. Every last one of them, this dude, this lady, oh, this, this guy, I actually friended on Facebook and I need to sit down with him. If I can get him on camera, I will, because this guy was a mentor to me and I didn't really know it. He's the first authentically rich person that I met. And when I say authentically, his money has money. None of that, just a real cool guy. Actually, I did business with him. I spent money with him. And I'm talking about has the $10 million house that's paid for. So he, he would talk to me. And over years, we developed this friendship and everything. And, you know, I haven't seen him in five years. And I just sent him a friend. And he instantly accepted. So hopefully we can get together and get him on camera. Because he has a lot of freaking lessons that if he will, he's open to that. Then this guy, um, my first referral commission 
one of few. I referred this guy to a 30 story office uh, building full of awesome furniture he removed. I got a nice commission check. It was like 90 days later, I get this check at work, right? Eight G's. I'm like, what? Never in my life. I mean, he just did deal on a handshake. It, I mean, it was just a beautiful thing. Okay. Financial pimps. I sold these guys some office furniture. Uh, the office manager's not there. They have been pimping so hard that one of the partners has brought his son in. This guy was my dude. Hit him up. He's doing well. We're going to have lunch. Hustle, hustle, hustle. But she had a quiet hustle. She's only like five feet tall. Very nice. I mean, as soon as you see her, you think, hey, if I go to her house, there's going to be some cookies. And there just might be. She had cancer. She beat that. And she managed to stay in her industry and climb. Very well known. Very well respected. Woo! Hustle, hustle, hustle. Not surprised at all. Not surprised at all. I'm not showing you these names because one of the things that I know that people on the internet like to do is look up people and email people and confirm stuff and really take it no further than that and just especially be harassing people. Uh, another deal. Um, this card was so plain. Looked it up. She just did a major relocation of a Fortune 100 company and there was glowing reviews on her LinkedIn page and I was just like, she's still doing her thing. Very unusual woman here. Very freaking unusual woman. Different kind of, totally different things. Um, this right here. First time I saw somebody with some real power. It was scary. Nice guy. Don't piss him off. These guys still in business. Used to work for these guys. And half of this stack is financial people. Now, I want you to think what makes that remarkable is we all know what happened. Financial markets melt down. People then half of the people who are still stroking it out in this list of cards, half financial people, half financial. Now, I just really looked at that. And the thing is, what came to me, it doesn't really matter what you do as long as you do it really well and you insulate yourself. And one of my mentors, because uh, there's, there's a few of them in here, he said something that was very pivotal and it's something that influenced me. He said, pay cash for your toys and take loans out on stuff you'll own forever. And I didn't understand that at the point he told me, but I do understand now because, you know, markets go up and down, but stuff that is tangible, stuff that's long-term, having a loan on it, it's not that bad of a deal. But having a loan on your toy like your boats, your lake house, your, your things that you just are having for fun and shit goes sideways, you know that's the first thing to go and then it impacts your ability to get stuff later on because your credit's going to get jacked up or, you know, other things. Kind of like uh, the chick that is foreclosing. I mean, she's a German lady. And that's one of the things. Very, very abrupt, very brisk, very crisp. And I don't know what happened. Like I said, I haven't seen her in 15 years. But... That was kind of a surprise. Like I said, I don't know what happened. But what I learned from spending, I spent all morning doing this because it was like, you know, it's going down memory day, uh, connected with a few people, had some great conversations. But all of the hustlers, all the people that I thought were hustlers or really pushed it, those are the ones who are still in business. Time and time again, all of those nice Namby people with the great credentials, their asses are gone out of business, can't find them. Um, on a darker note, on a sad note, I shouldn't say, you know, sad note, uh, quite a few people are dead. You know, like looking at this, like what was like, I've seen obituaries for people. I was just like, God. And it was just like, a lot of them are gone. And, you know, I was dealing with people who were at the time, in their late 40s, 50s, 60s. So it makes sense. And one guy, you know, he's got to be 90 years old, but his company is still stroking. Matter of fact, I'm going to see him next week. He's got to be 90 years old, but company still in business. Same location. I think he owns the building. And just the lessons that I, that I got out of this was don't let anyone dissuade you from being a hustler or using your hustler mindset or hustling hard because 
These are the people who are still in business, who are still living uh, the same house, business address is the same. They're still doing this stuff. And I really look at how there's, there's a few that made some pivots and they pivot up because in this environment, and this is something else, and, then, and I'm going to tell it to you in this group, some of you are 40 some, some of you are 50 something. If you do not have an established career track path reputation or whatever you're doing, and you get in your late 40s and early 50s, you're fucked. The ageism. I, I'm 48. I have friends. I have friends who are going through this shit right now. And it is not pretty. It is not even close to pretty. One person confessed. It's like, hey, you know, uh, when you write and doing YouTube and I laugh, I wish I had joined your ass. Because this thing is about to be pretty pretty bad and when i say bad if you do not have the ability because i'm gonna pull up and this is something and I'm, once again i'm gonna urge people to print these up these are the uh the gary halbert letters the boring letters he was in prison he wrote he's writing these letters to his son serious business lessons in these letters Serious business lessons. Go online, print it up. It's free. If you got to go to Kinko's and spend five bucks and use their printer, do it and go through these things. Um, I am, uh, yeah, I'm up. You know, I've got like seven more to go because there's 25 and I'm on 18. Go through these things. Free information. And more importantly, take the information and put it to use because this is what's happening. China recently, and I posted these things in the group for a reason. China recently overtook the United States in car sales. That trend is not going to reverse itself. You're going to see less people in the United States buy cars because right now, one of the reasons that we have such a high purchase rate is there's a number of families that have three, four, five, six, seven cars. You know, it's like four people that live in the house, five people in the house, and they all drive. There's a lot of families like that. And there's a lot of individuals who have two and three cars. That's about to roll back seriously hard because car, having a car is a very costly expenditure. Another thing, we are going into an international world. We It's just a global economy that we're having. So all of these things impact. Like Switzerland just pulled out of the euro, you know, out of the euro and just said, oh, fuck that. We're not doing this anymore. We're not, we're not messing with y'all because our currency is strong and we want to keep it strong. And we see bad things on the horizon. We're going to have another recession or let's just say a, a further dip in the blah, just the the non-spectacular growth, the just blah. It's just it's just blah that I am making the trip either to Republic of Georgia or China, maybe Hong Kong. And I'm going to set up a business over there because all of my information keeps saying, go east, young man. Go east, young man. Because that's where the money is. And that's where the money's going to be for decades. Because all those economies are coming online. And someone posted in a group, and this is something that I talked about. It's a Google app that you can just take with your camera and point it at a foreign language and it translates it into your language. Essentially, data recognition software with a massive database. But we're that close to tablet here but essentially this thing with kindle and translating books in different languages that's about to go bye-bye that's about to be like ugh, whatever so you very popular timely it'll be read around the world and there might be some context or nuances in language but they'll get the gist of it and it's going to get better and better and better so one of the reasons that i kind of come down hard on the people who are always posting hot 97.5 the breakfast club and all this other stuff okay we as black, we have got to expand our fucking horizons versus hip hop. I mean, it is like people, oh, hip hop is the shit that we own. Yeah, that's our shit. We, cr okay, truth be told, we don't fucking monetize that shit like other groups. I'm gonna give you a great example. How long have black women have big asses? Since day one, right? Who actually made more money off a of big ass than any black woman? Kim Kardashian. Montage the hell out of that big ass. Twerking. It's been around since fucking 2000. Who of it? 
oh, we're going to create a fitness craze and we're going to put the twerk as a movement to power up your ass muscles. See, this is the problem. And I've seen it and I, I, I keep saying it and then I'm called a hater or our Uncle Tom. You can't put a fence around cultural accoutrements unless you steep them in religion in a language that other people can't speak. Jews have all kinds of traditions and things, and it's in Hebrew. And unless you know the language, you can't appropriate it. That's how they protect their shit. Black folks, there is no secret language. There is no ritual. And some come out like when they were doing these Harlem Shake videos and people in Harlem, and they go on the street and people in Harlem are like, just mad. Just what the fuck are you mad about? You can't do shit with that. People who appreciate their cultural jewels protect them, not give them away, not leave them on the table where they can be taken or snatched. They protect them in rituals, in sacred meat ceremonies, and this they protect this stuff. They protect it. And that is why they are able to enjoy the sac you know keeping them sacred and then the thing is you know, once again everyone wants to go with the hot 107 not these okay there are so many fucking businesses that have nothing to do with hip-hop and i'm gonna say this now some people are about to get pissed off and i had this friend this conversation with a friend because when i was putting together this youtube thing and i was putting together these books I did the research and I appealed to a certain demographic. And I'm going to tell you what demographic I appealed to. Single white males aged 25 to 45. Yep, sure did. Did not go after anyone else. Did not give a fuck. Didn't care. Because I have been in business for 15 years. And I know demographics are fucking hugely important. Insanely important. So if I, and I'm going to say this, and if you're black and you lead a group, so be it. If I had crafted my message in my offerings to black folks, I would have had to go back in the storage auction business or I would have had to get a job. That's just reality. Because when I said in the group that that demographic does not spend money on certain things, the truth of the man is done. T-shirts, uh, games, yeah. Music, yeah. Bullshit, yeah. And it's, well, I shouldn't even say bullshit. I should say entertainment apps. Oh, yeah. Or is that demographic spending money on coding apps? Fuck no. Is that demographic spending uh, on uh, language apps? Fuck no. Is that demographic spending money on apps that convert currency? Fuck no. They're not spending money on that shit. And that's the real shit. That's the important shit. That's the shit that is shaping the fucking world right now. That's what's shaping. When I was telling someone that you can actually fly to another country and start a offshore account you know because most people think that stuff is only for the ultra or wealthy and it's not it's something that's within if you have a passport and you have two thousand dollars it's within your reach it's within your reach that's how close it is and one of the things that i want to do here is expand the opportunity base expand the opportunity base i am a nerd and i'm fucking proud of it because it is my nerd power that has gotten me where i'm at nerd power this whole swag and all this other stuff and it's something else too i put a video by j cole and i and if you listen to it and you saw it he bought the house that he grew up in the last house he was in to actually help other families you know hey you're in this house for two years to give you some kind of help up that is not typical hip-hop mindset it's not hip hop mindset. They ain't even close to it. If you look at it and you look at Ryan Leslie, once again, nerd, J. Cole, nerd. A lot of these guys have a high nerd quote and, and Lupe Fiasco, nerd, high nerd quote. These are the guys who are going to reshape hip hop, but more importantly, they're going to create fortunes that they can pass on to their kids and then the knowledge to manage those fortunes. That's how a group of people emerge from bullshit. You know, everyone talks about slavery. Everyone gets into slavery. I have a lot of Jewish friends. I had Jewish roommates, and we talked in depth about the bullshit. 
if you know the history, they've been a slave slaves for fucking 2,000 years. And there are other people, it's like the Semites, who the real Jews, I'm not even getting into that stuff. Present day Jews, let's just go back four, five, six hundred years, they were persecuted. Let's go with black folks, four, five hundred years persecuted. Often in the same boat, but the response mechanism to get out of that boat has been different. You have people, as a little nerdy kid, I was picked on for being smart. That is dangerous to a culture that when you insult and marginalize the folks who have the intellect to raise the group, you're damping, you're damning the group. And that's that's a problem. It's it's changing. Because you know, when someone sees that, hey, Ryan Leslie got a scholarship to Harvard. Oh, and he's still cool. Okay, that's gonna pull one little kid who's gonna go, oh fuck, I am not gonna expose my intellect. Because I don't want to be seen as a smarty art kid. I'd rather be seen as dumb but cool. That is how powerful peer pressure is. And there's some adults who still are part of that. But what we're going to do here is we're going to expand some different concepts. And like I said, I'm going global. I'm, like I said, either Republic of Georgia or Hong Kong. And what I'm going to do when I make that trip, I'm going to step by step put out the information on what I did and how I did it. And there's a reason I'm doing this. I've been saying this for a long time. We're about to go through what Japan's been going on two decades. There's just this blah, 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 blah. Now, if I go ahead and educate myself, because it's going to be an education to me, because I know when I get over there, there's going to be stuff that I read because I was having a conversation just last night with someone from France. Because she's coming here to teach English. And we're just talking about France. And I was talking about my concerns. And she was just telling me what she went through when she was immigrated to France. And it was very much on point with my other friends. So you have to go there and experience for yourself. Because there's only going to be so much context in a blog or videos. You're going to have to go there. Because person A may have had an experience that you have because you're not person A. So I just feel that the future is East. I just feel the future is East because of emerging economies with technology, making certain things that were impossible, possible like fracking with the shale oil couldn't do it because it was too expensive, but technology reduced the cost. And I have a feeling it's going to reduce the cost again. So what I'm saying, and I'm, I'm speaking to the black folks in the group because this is something else. And I had a conversation with a friend. I was like, I got more black folks joining the group than ever before. I will tell you, 2009 to 2012, there weren't that many black folks on Team G. It really wasn't. I mean, I kept track. The ratio was like 90% white, 10% black. Now, there's more black folks coming, which is a wonderful thing. However, just like I had to shut down some stuff with flipping bags, and then dudes said, well, the, I'm from London, and that's, I'm like, okay. You put up a faceless profile, then you come in talking about flipping bags, there is no way in the world that you're that fucking stupid to even think that shit wouldn't be misconstrued. Create a profile last month to join the group. Um, going forward, because there's a few people in there who have like I call a faceless profile. So I'm going to leave them alone because they haven't caused any damage. But going forward, if you just create your Facebook profile and there's no pictures or it's just a bunch of bullshit, you can't get in. Because hands down, over the years, I've had more bullshit out of folks who just for some reason don't want to put out who they are, don't want to put out a picture of who they are, and just hide and then start shit. Same thing on YouTube. Same people. Oh, and that brings up another point that I was going to talk about with uh, Hot 97.05. Do this on any Hot 97, any of those. Go to the comments section. Look at the people. Go from the people. Go to their YouTube page if the discussion thing is exposed look at what they're watching and commenting on I, I, every time that I get someone that comes in at me from the left or the sideways I go there and I look and I see the same things they're watching hip hop videos that they're dealing with games nothing wrong with that but there is no financial appreciation videos there's no how to start a business videos there's no intellectual curiosity it's just or I should say entertainment videos only Entertainment videos only. And if that's your mindset where most of your mental bandwidth goes to just fucking entertaining yourself, you're not going to build shit. 
And that's what I see. And that's why I'm just like really, really saying, hey, you know, you want to put the hot 97.15 videos up there? Cool. But make sure you put a financial video or a how to start a business video or how to write a book. Video. You know, balance that shit out because very few people can live on the fruit of hip hop. And also with hip hop, uh, right now there's a lot of racial conversations with Iggy Azalea and all those other things. I wish I had my whiteboard because I'm looking for an office where I can do the whiteboard thing. And I'm just going to speak it. Okay. Once again, it's knowing what the population is. All right. There's a hundred and there's 220, 230 million white people in the United States of America. So you can actually say 60 to 70 million, maybe 80 million are from 10 to 20. Okay. That's the group that's buying all this music. All right. Let's talk about black folks. There's 44, what, 40, 40, 44 million black folks. Go to the appropriate age demographic of folks who are buying this music. We're talking, let's see, 12 million. If that, 12 million. So you got 12 million black kids and you have, let's just bring it down. Let's say 60 million white kids. Five to one ratio. This is why Eminem so outsells more money because there are more people who's like, hey, I can identify with Eminem. I have blonde hair, I have blue eyes, and I can rap. They can't identify with, uh, I was getting ready to say, who? Because I'm going to go back. They can't identify with Master P. They can like the music, they can dance, they can buy, but they can't identify with Master P. They'll never look like Master P. They'll never sound like Master P. They can't, you know, a little white girl. I can't be Nicki Minaj. She's beautiful. I can't rap like her, but I can be Iggy and I can be Justin and I can be Justin Bieber. And I can be Timberlake because most people want to see a reflection of themselves to appreciate. Is it racist? I think to a degree it is. But it is what it is. Like one of my rules. Don't hate the player. Don't hate the game. Learn the rules so you can fucking win. So I peeped that out a long time ago. And I've had people argue me. Well, it was it was black folks who were buying all this music. No, it ain't enough of them. It ain't enough. It's not enough. And then with a ritual in certain black communities of bootlegging, they ain't buying the shit. They bootlegging the shit. So that even reduces the number even less. So when you look at the numbers, you come away with a different picture. But many people are rooted in tribalism and they're rooted in what I call false cultural beliefs. Oh, well, we're black people, we do this. We're white people, we do this. The truth of the matter is, everybody's in the same fucking boat, getting fucked by the same powers that be, but most folks are too rooted in cultural false pride to even see that shit. Even to own up to it. It's just like, well, this is it. Because I have black friends who think white people have like these amazing lives. I have white friends who think black folks are like, yeah, everything's set up for black folks. You know, they get all this special stuff and all these protections. And you have all of these people talking about each other. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. But very few are talking to each other. Because if you talk to each other and you're like, oh, shit, we live in the same way. Oh, shit, we have the same problems. Oh, shit. Then you start to relate. And then the powers that be have less power. But since people will stick on this cultural pride, because the truth of the matter is, unless you are in your original country and there hasn't been too many invaders in your land, everybody's a mutt. You got people who look like me, dark as me. You do a DNA test. They're going to be like 75 fucking percent European. Then you're going to have people who are looking like uh, Bill Clinton and they're going to be like 75 percent African on the DNA level. When you travel the world and actually see how people look around the world, it just opens up your eyes to all kinds of things. But if you just stay here in the United States of America, and only 15% of people in the United States of America are passport holders. It's one thing to look at something on television, and it's a whole other thing to be sitting in a restaurant and see that shit up live. You know, that yak you saw walking down the street. Now he's in the back, and now he's going to be your dinner. I mean, you see that stuff. It's different. You go to the mart and you see shit hanging up. That's like, yeah, you want to eat that? Different. And that's one of the reasons that I am going to really start cracking down on a lot of the content here because when I, and this is something else, I take days off because I'm more creative when I take days off. And 
I know this what gets posted when I'm off and versus what gets posted when I'm actually active posting and driving stuff. I started the group. That's my responsibility. No problem. But I want you to really take a more curate better, put more stuff up like the video with Damon Williams and the app I thought was awesome. I didn't even know he had an app. I want to see more of that. Uh, more people who are doing things outside the box. And like Damon Williams, his thing is just so cool because he has the money to fund a tech project. Many tech projects are around the first round of funding is $500,000 500, to maybe a million, maybe two million. That's first round. That's just to get the prototypes and stuff. He's got the money to do that, which is amazing because if he hits and he invests his own money, oh man, you get like, Dr. Dre and Beats. Dr. Dre made more money off Beats than he did anything before. You get a situation like Prince. Prince actually, you know, created iTunes. He started that shit. He would put iTunes on the map. Prince said he made more money from that one download when he did that iTunes thing than the previous decades before. Because what happens is the Miller man was, see ya. It is I am the the um, the creator, and I'm using this distribution system, and you're the end user. So it's like through this distribution system to me. No time in history has it been that fucking clean. And what's happening is, people are going to build their own distribution system. They're going to leverage the internet, and you're going to go into their portal like uh, Louis C.K. Louis C.K. He filmed his own shows, pay for it out of pocket put a website together and sold it and made like seven figures in like a week. Shit stunned him. He wasn't used to getting paid that much that quick because he was in the owner seat. When you're in the owner seat, it's a different mindset. It's a different cash flow. It's a whole different thing. But when you keep looking at cultural signals of what you should do, honestly, you know, what I do is hard to explain. Uh, well, I put the video up there by Nev because essentially when he was saying, you know, I got this website, I do this, I do this and do this. And then he broke it down. Essentially, they want to know, like, what, how the f money? That's what many people were real curious about with me. I'll, I'll tell you a quick story. This shit was funny. In the other place. And this is when I had white door, the white BMW. Clean as hell. A lot of people try to buy that car. It's going out. She came to my place. Fully furnished, tastefully furnished, nice artwork on the walls. We went out several Not once was I acting like I was pressed for money because I wasn't. And she asked me five different ways, like, so how do you make a living? She could not conceptualize that me sitting at home on my ass was making, she couldn't see it because she had to work like a runaway slave to make her dollars and shillings and the gold doubloons. Whereas me, Anytime she called me, oh, I'm just sitting there chilling. What are you doing? That shit could not compute with her because it, it created a very strange thing for her to explain to her friends. Because when you date someone and people talk, so what does he do? What does she do? At some point, that's coming up very, very early. So when you're like, I'm, uh, well, he's got this internet. That's why I just tell people, oh, I'm a writer. Pull him to the Amazon page. It's just easier. Their minds can wrap this like, Click. Oh, okay. He writes books. He's got it. All right. All right I understand. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand it. Okay, cool, cool. But when I started like, well, actually I have 10 different sources of income. Well, what? You got a YouTube channel, Kindle, Create Space. Wait, 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 wait. You to me. What the fuck is you? <laughs> I mean, you just see the smoke coming out of their ears. It's just like, oh, this is too much. I can handle that. I just want to work my job, go home, drink a beer, and, you know, get a blowjob. Shit, I'm good. All the other shit, that's some bullshit. Fuck that bullshit. That's just too much work. And what many of you don't understand is that you're going to become me whether you want to or not. This new thing is going to force you to get yourself five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten streams of income. It's going to force you because I'll, I'll tell you, my uh, create space income at one point was fucking fantastic. I used to look every every day because it was that exciting it's like let me ooh, ooh, every oh <laughs> i sold 10 bucks today oh shit ooh, you know it was exciting 
I might make 50, 100 bucks a month now. I had hours where I was making that. Making that in less than an hour. And it, that one of the things is these things change. And you you got to, you're better off creating businesses than, retire, than relying on the stock market. You just are. If you can create a micro business that makes you 500 to 1,000 consistently and say it takes you an hour a month to run that sucker. That is better than any fucking stock you can buy unless you just get in on the equity partner level. It's just this. Do the math. Look up what people earn over, you know, that's the reason it takes decades to make for money to appreciate. Like, yeah, if you can put the money in there and you get X amount of yield. I had a book. Let's start making money A to Z with self storage and auction. There's not one person I know that's had a stock that's performed like that book did. Not one. And it took me three months to write the first time that I had a, not, I don't know anyone that's had a stock that had that kind of appreciation. Not, nobody. And also, you just talk about making stuff. Germany is probably one of the strongest, if not the strongest country in uh, Europe. So when you look at that, why? They have a strong and long history of making shit. And they've become very, very good at it. And they've become very, very good at the supply chains. And they've become very, very good at exporting. They're very good at what they do. And that's why they have money. And some of this shit is boring as fuck. It's not, ooh, wee. It's just things that people need. Regular, run-of-the-mill stuff. So, that is your... Hustler University Facebook group message. Hopefully you got something out of it. Feel free to leave some comments. Feel free to bring up some evidence. Because if you're going to come at me with demos, understand I am a metric fool. And I have looked up these demos and I continue to look them up. This is how come I know that 80% of the people who watch my YouTube channel are male. It used to be 90%. And it kind of skewed because it's kind of like 80-something to a teen something in terms of men and women. Because I look at this stuff. I know who my audience is. I know that's why I can cuss so much. Because if my audience was like 75% female and 25% guys, I would probably be speaking like this. Well, Wendy. Oh, oh, oh my God. Oh, poo. Did you see that? But that's not my audience. My audience is a bunch of hard legs. My audience is a bunch of guys who are fucking tired of the system. They're tired of getting bent over by the big penis in the sky. And they're looking for assistance. And they're looking for someone to tell them the fucking truth. There is no Superman. There is no Batman. There is no fucking Spider-Man. You have to put on the cape and be your own personal fucking superhero. I'll tell you that. Because I went through it. And I will. And I'm telling you. Hustle University life skills oh wait till i get that fucking whiteboard wait till i get that fucking whiteboard because then the concepts will have more meaning because i will be able to break them down and you'll be able to see it you'll hear it and see it and conceptualize it and it'll just be better so that's one of the things that i'm looking for because i wish someone had told me the truth when i was 20 i felt betrayed i felt lied to it was just you know i was a good dude worked hard and the shit just wasn't working. Someone for neglected to tell me about fucking strategy. <laughs> if someone neglected to tell me about markets. And this is something in my writing group. And someone who used to hate me in that writing group had to admit late last year. Because I went in and I said this. And people got mad. A poorly written book in the proper genre, demographic marketplace, will do better than an a beautifully skillful masterpiece written in a genre marketplace that no one gives a shit about. And there's like, no, no, the cream rises to the crop. Glendon, the cream rises to the crop. And there were some people who had some of those masterpieces, right? Worked on them, paid 2,500 to have them edited and proofed. And they were flawless and impeccable, right? Yet my typo ridden ass was making more money than they were because I wrote a book that was appropriate for marketplace and it was re received by the marketplace. Whereas their books, which they slay, it wasn't an effort issue. It was a product issue. And when you say, Oh God, you're talking, I slaved over this. This is my child. Don't talk about little boo boo like that. Oh, it's okay. Little boo boo. It's okay. Bookie. And they are missing the point. Your books a fucking product. 
And it's a product that either people want or people don't want. If they don't want it, I don't care how much money you put into it. I don't care how great it is. I don't care if it took you 20 years to write. You still will not make any money. Now, if you want to write a book just because you want to write it and put it out there and share with your friends, that's a great accomplishment. And some you can hang your pride on. But if you're looking to make money, that is not the way to go. That shit four years ago. And finally, some of those little monkeys like, oh, shit. He was right. Oh, fuck. He was right. Fuck. Fuck. <laughs> Someone had the email. <laughs> it's just funny. It's just funny. And uh, some people are now starting to get screwed by Amazon. Something else I said three years ago. But no, I was just running around like Chicken Little. Oh, the sky is falling. The sky is falling. The sky. Mm -mm. That was acid rain, bitch. All right, so I'm going to tighten this up. But like I said, go ahead, put some comments in, talk about it, chop it up, and I will see you on the good side.